This is my equipment lecture. We're going to talk about the basic equipment that you need to be a forensic photographer. You're going to need three primary focal length lenses. You need a wide angle, a normal, and a telephoto lens. Wide angle is more than 50 degrees coverage. That means that you're getting more captured onto your digital media than normal. A normal lens is somewhere between 40 and 50 degrees coverage onto the digital media, and a telephoto lens captures less than 40 degrees on the digital media. Focal length lenses, 18 millimeter, 24 millimeter, and 35 millimeter. You're getting a landscape. You're getting an overall look at this scene at 18, and then you move in closer to 24, and then closer more at 25. You go down to 55, 85, and 105, and you'll notice that the objects appear to get closer and closer together between 20, between 55, 85, and 105. And then you go to 135, to 200, to 300. And the area of coverage gets smaller, and you get closer and closer to the object that you are capturing an image of on your digital media. Here, this is a simulation of what happens when you're using different focal length lenses to capture what you want on your digital media. You start at 35 millimeter, you get this small area, and then 24 millimeter, it gives you more area, it gets bigger, and then you get to 16 millimeter, you can capture an even wider area. Then you get to 15 millimeter. This is a fisheye lens. It distorts. You know this going in. You do not use this typically for documenting crime scenes. This is something that you use when you're doing art photography or something like that. Then you get to 12 millimeter, which gets wider angle, and you're capturing more of the scene, and it gets it's more true and accurate onto your digital media. And then to the 10 millimeter lens that captures the widest possible area onto your digital media. This is, quote, a, a illustration of a normal lens and what you take with a normal lens. This is the type of photography that you and I do and what we use to capture a crime scene. Telephoto lenses capture a smaller angle of view onto the digital image that compress the distances between the foreground and background objects. Telephoto lenses are bigger and heavier than normal and wide-angle lenses. They have more glass in them. They have more metal in them. They are long. That's what you have to have. Here we've got a telephoto lens. It pushes the objects in the foreground and background and gets you closer to the object that you're taking a picture of. When you're using a telephoto lens, you need to be careful about the shutter speed you use when you're using a telephoto lens. You cannot safely take a picture of an object using a telephoto lens at anything slower than the focal length of the lens. If you have a 200 millimeter lens, the slowest shutter speed that you can use without a tripod is one two hundredth of a second. If you're taking pictures of a object at a great distance and you've got a thousand millimeter lens, then you need to be put your camera, if you're hand holding the camera, at one one thousandth of a second at the bare minimum. And the best thing to use is to have your camera on a tripod. When you're doing work as a forensic photographer and you're at a scene that is called a dynamic scene, you're doing something, you're at some type of gathering or something where things are happening. You have a funeral or something of a gang member and you're sitting somewhere. You need something like this monopod. You see the sports photographers use these all the time. They offer you the st stability of a tripod with the flexibility and the ease of movement so that you can hold your camera steady and be able to move quickly and easily. You need a tripod when you're making long exposures. Tripods come in assorted sizes, shapes, and colors. Be sure to get the appropriate type tripod. When you're taking pictures, 
in low light level situations, you have to have one. Or you're doing comparison work, you have to have one. You have to have them in low light level because your exposures are extremely long times. When you're doing comparison work, you need to make sure that the back of your camera is parallel to what you're taking a picture of. If you're not staying parallel, if the camera back is not parallel to the object you're taking the comparison picture of, it's going to be distorted and not be good enough for comparison purposes. When you need to be out there and you need a super telephoto lens, I don't, I don't see where. I have never been in a situation quite like this, but I know, do know that we use the big lenses when we are go to gang funerals and something like that. I must be sitting in a van and looking out through the side windows of a van, taking pictures of all the people that come to your funeral. And then you have lenses like this, the really big lenses. And you say, what in the world do you need a lens like that for? Well, there are a couple of places where you need these. When you're going to go to something like a NASCAR race, where they've got cars going at above 200 miles an hour, and they don't want you out there, and you don't want to be out there because these cars come off the track and you can't get out of the way fast enough. Or when you're taking pictures of surfing or something like that, where you cannot get out in there in the water and be able to capture pictures of these surfers moving quickly and you need to have a long lens and you don't want to get wet and get your equipment wet. If you're going to be a sports photographer or if you're going to be a photographer out in what I call tactical situations, that's where you need to be able to take pictures of a lot of different things and be able to move around. This is the amount of equipment you're going to need to have. If you're going to be a photographer for AP or you or Black Star or somebody and go into a war environment or where things are happening, you need cameras like this and you need to be able to use them and have the equipment that you need. You need telephoto and wide angle almost simultaneously. You need to move back and forth between them so that you can, you can adapt to the environment that you find yourself in, so that they are prepared, so that you can get telephoto pictures and wide angle and just right reach for the right camera to capture the image. And here you see all the photographers at a sporting event and they have all their equipment. Here they've got long telephoto lenses. And this is uh, all the photographers comparing their equipment, saying my lens is bigger and better than yours. And would, and then in the one down in the lower right hand corner, you see all these cameras sitting there on the floor or on the, uh, the, the grass. Well, those cameras are set up and they have a, a, you can set them up so that they will do a burst of six, eight, ten exposures when an object comes within a distance that you preset in the camera and the cameras just take pictures every time anything that comes in within that distance and captures those images. And they sit there and they wait to do their job. So these photographers mount these cameras down there in the end zone of uh, soccer matches or football so that they can capture these wonderful images remotely. These are just some of the lenses that are available for all the photographers that are out there. When you're a forensic photographer and you're out there in the real world, not all of your evidence is going to be on flat surfaces. Make it easy. When you're doing tire tracks or shoe prints or tire, or tire tracks or fingerprints or something, they are on surfaces that are at an angle. So you need to measure the angle where these impression evidence have been left. So you need to figure out what the angle is of this angle of this evidence that was left at the crime scene. When you do that, then you need to get, put your camera on a tripod and put the back of your camera at the same angle as the object that you're taking a picture of so that you can get a fair and accurate documentation of the piece of evidence that you're photographing. And when you have that, you have to have a scale in there. And I'm a big fan of the L scale. You see them over on the lower left-hand corner. Those are my friend because you get 
vertical and horizontal dimensions of what you're taking a picture of. We don't have scales where we weigh stuff. So you don't, that's not our job. That's not what we do. That's not how we work. And you need scales like the ones on the left. And please, I had a student who brought in a picture using a Hello Kitty scale showing unknown red liquid blood on a surface. And they put a Hello Kitty scale in there to show the size of this blood stain on this floor. That is not acceptable. That does not look professional. And please don't do that. Not That's not what this is about. On the scales, you'll notice on the left-hand side, there's what's called an ABFO scale. That's the American Board of Forensic Odontology. That's for dentists. And those circles in that scale are there so that you can tell if your lens is parallel to what you're taking a picture of and not distorting the image. If the circles are not circular and the rectangles are rectangular, then you are not getting a fair and accurate documentation of the evidence that you're capturing of on your digital media. A tripod is required when using a telephoto lens. You need to do this. My illustration that I use in class is if you've got a pair of binoculars, take them with you and you go out outside and you look up at the moon with your pair of binoculars and you're sitting up there looking at the moon and the moon is moving around all the time. You can't hold it still because, and that's happening because your heart is beating, your wind is blowing, you're breathing, and you're magnifying the motion, looking up your, your binoculars are 50 power. They're 50 times closer than you can see with your eyes. And all of that magnification transfers into the binocular. The same thing happens when you're taking pictures over a distance with a telephoto lens. You need to have a tripod because all of the movements are magnified in proportion to the focal length of the lens. Wide angle. I use a wide angle lens, usually about a 35 millimeter lens on a good old, on a, the lens, a slightly more than what's called a normal lens, so that I can capture images that capture what the person at the crime scene sees, and so that they can see what I'm seeing, and so that the judge and the jury and the detectives can see what is there. A wide angle lens captures a greater angle than a normal lens does, but our human eye sees at a wider angle than a normal lens. So I think that the wide angle lens does a good job of describing it for use in the court. When you use a wide angle lens, it makes the distance between the foreground objects and the background objects look larger than they are. This type of lens can make the foreground objects appear larger than your actual size when you see them. Here, this is an absolute, this is an illustration that I captured in a classroom here at Scottsdale. You can see that the monster beverage can stays approximately the same size in both of these pictures. But you can see that the doorway changes from being far away to being next door but the can stays the same size. The wide angle lens distorts the distance between the foreground and the background, and the telephoto lens compresses the distance between the foreground and the background. So you need to be very careful about how you capture your image and how you describe your scene. You need to use a moderate wide angle lens, not an extreme wide angle lens, to document a crime scene. Again, these are just illustrations to give you another perspective on the same thing that we that I just talked about. The illustration at the 70 millimeter lens, the distance between the milk and cookies and the, the bar is significant. You can see in the second image, the milk and cookies and the red barn are, is closer. The barn is closer to the cookies. And at the 200 millimeter lens, the, the glass of milk is getting larger and the barn is getting smaller or getting bigger more than the frame. And so you can't get it all into the frame. Macro versus micro. Micro lenses allow you to capture images of images such as hairs and fibers that are smaller than life size. 
so that you can they can be used in court. Macro allows you a macro lens allows you to capture an image of an image at up to the same size as it was as found at a crime scene. We use this for fingerprints and prime marks and evidence such as that. You need a flashlight when you're out at a crime scene, daylight or at night. You're going to need this so that you can see into darkened areas. You need to have a tactical knife so that you can move around and take care of business and collect evidence or do stuff or do whatever needs to be done to capture your images at a crime scene. If you have any questions, please feel free to ask any questions at this time.